Okay. Welcome to Unraveling the Brain. I'm your host, Dr. Josh Matson. Today, we are going to be talking with Dr. Ryan about the vestibular system, how it affects motor development, how it affects cognitive development, and all kinds of deficits we see in kids that are struggling. And it's a great interview today. Let's jump into it. What's up, man? How's it going? Not much. I'm doing good. Okay. Let's talk about the vestibular system. Maybe give a, since you have a background in vestibular rehab and you're a vestibular specialist, Tell everyone what the vestibular system is. So Honestly, there. it's after learning about it, it's been one of my favorite things to talk about because it's something that a lot of people have never even heard of, especially parents and families, until um, a family member or a child is dealing with a uh, dysfunction in it. So the vestibular system itself is comprised of a peripheral portion and a central portion. So the peripheral portion is kind of what most people think about if they have heard of vestibular system. So we have two vestibular apparatuses in each of our ears so it's kind of near the hearing area and it's connected a little bit to hearing but they're two separate things so the fun part about it it does an incredible amount for our balance our coordination but it's as each side is about as big as your pinky nail so it's super small but it um, has two major components that uh, are semicircular canals which are three circles that are aligned in different directions um, that no matter where we move our head, fluid moves in, in there and it sends a signal to our brain and tells us where we are in space. But it also has uh, what we call a utricle and saccule that helps with gravity. So if we're going up in an elevator, it can um, determine that elevation change. If we're going forward and backwards in a car, it can, it can sense that motion as well. And then we have a central component, which is going to be um, the vestibular nuclei, which are in our brainstem, but also it's closely related and sends a lot of information to our um, cerebellum, which we know does a ton with our balance and coordination as well. Um, but it also sends all that information up through the spinal, uh, vestibular spinal, and vestibular cortical tracts up into yep. our frontal lobe. So we know where we are in space. Essentially, easiest way to put it is the vestibular system tells us where we are. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and, even, you know, a lot more than that, like of the aspect of a lot of people don't realize the major, major effect it has on cognitive development. Like if you, it's it's really cool. Like if you look up speech development and vestibular function, like you'll find a ton of research that supports doing vestibular rehab mm -hmm. improve speech because of that huge effect that it has into the frontal lobes and into the, our motor development systems. And, and uh, we often talk about this of rehabbing this system uh, really a after we get rid of primitive reflexes and start setting that foundation, then we start working on the vestibular system a lot. Um, what are some of the biggest deficits that we see in kids in relation to their vestibular system? Yeah, so I think with the children we see here at Infinity, a lot of it is developmental delays. So a lot of research is coming out specifically for children with autism and what they're seeing is they're having a lot of developmental delays in their vestibular, vestibular system itself, which is strongly correlated to proprioception impairments, sensory processing impairments, so, and then frontal lobe. So the vestibular system itself is not feeding well into the frontal lobes to, um, to improve motor balance and cognition because the frontal lobe has a ton to do with our judgment, our higher level cognitive um, centers and thinking. But it also, we're having um, developmental delays in the cerebellum in kids with autism. So yeah. essentially all the areas that either the vestibular system is feeding into or is getting fed into is um, struggling to talk. And right. so if we're not, and, and the vestibular system is one of our first systems that um, that is developed in utero. And so like before vision. And so we really use that, like the more the mom moves, when she even has the baby in her um, tummy still is activating that vestibular system. So it needs to be continually activated. And so with kids with autism, we have that developmental delays, whether in the frontal lobe or cerebellum. So we're not getting as much feedback into the vestibular system and then back out towards those centers. So it has a direct correlation to um, that cognitive, those cognitive centers. Yeah. Yeah, for um, sure. And, and that's, you, you see that, you can see that in a lot of these kids that, you know, one of the most consistent things you'll see is, is motor dysfunctions, gait abnormalities, coordination, balance issues. Uh, and, you know, if you have a kid that's struggling with developmental issues, if you have them just try to balance, they mm -hmm. typically can't do it or can't do it for very long or appropriately. And and that's directly looking at those that vestibular system and how it's integrating into the brain. Um, 
What are some things for parents to look for, most common symptoms of vestibular dysfunctions, and what are some things they can do to, to work on them? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of times, and again, we'll go back to autism, but in a lot of kids with developmental delays, oftentimes we'll see like sensory seekers or kids who are avoiding sensory information. And it can kind of play a lot into that vestibular system as well, where a kid who constantly on the tire swing, constantly wants to be swinging, they're trying to get that feedback into their vestibular system because yep. it's it's a low threshold, so it's or a high threshold, so it's trying to get that feedback in there. And the opposite is true for kids who avoid it. Their vestibular system's so hot. So, yeah, so they're one little thing and they get dizzy. Yep. So um, kids who can verbally describe, they can describe dizziness, unsteadiness on their feet or um you're watching them as a parent and they're stepping on your toes like they don't know where they are in space so they're running into walls stuff like that or th or you're watching them do sports and their coordination's off um because like we said vestibular systems highly correlated to that cerebellum and those work interchangeably so you kind of see um similar things with both of those so kids who um like i said love to move a ton and vice versa, they don't even want to sit on a chair that swivels because it will make them feel dizzy. Yeah. So to integrate or to help even establish the the vestibular system, you can do simple things like kids rolling on the ground. Anytime they're moving their head, their vestibular system's on. It's yeah. really the only balance system we have in our body that we can't turn off. So we can close our, so our three balance systems are our somatosensory, like our feet. What are we feeling through our feet? Yep. Our eyes tell us where we are. It's always looking for vertical so we know where we are. I can take away their ability to stand um, on a flat, firm surface by putting foam, then putting the child on foam, and now they feel unsteady. I can make them close their eyes, but I can't shut off their vestibular system in any way. Right. And so... If, if a child is unable to stand there um, with their eyes closed, with their feet together, looking up and down or moving their head, that's a sign that they're struggling with the vestibular system. Right. So anytime in dark rooms too, like if a kid's stumbling around in a dark room because they don't have awareness of where they are and their feet and... That proprioceptive feedback. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not getting that vestibular system as much. So um, unsteadiness is a big one. Um, kind of wobbly on their feet are big too with yeah. kids yeah for sure and you know you have a huge background in in uh tbis and brain injuries mm -hmm. and uh with working with on with life for you know years before this um let's talk a little about that of biggest deficits you see with tbis and traumatic brain injuries um and maybe some rehab strategies for that because obviously the vestibular system is going to play a massive yeah. amount into that too uh, but maybe some other systems that play off of that in those types of cases. And um, so if a kid, someone does have a, you know, maybe a parent has a kid that had a TBI, um, some things to look at that maybe other people haven't told them to. Yeah, for sure. We saw, I saw a lot of post-concussion, a lot of TBI as well. So thinking about that vestibular system as a peripheral and a central system, a child who gets a concussion during a sport can get a big knock to the head, maybe on their left side, and that inner ear um, can have dysfunction. So now they're getting two different signals. So their left ear is telling their brain something, their right ear is telling their brain something. It's The brain says, I don't understand this information, and we get dizziness yep. or vertigo. Um, and so training that is all about retraining. So if, for example, if we have a peripheral injury, from a concussion, a uh, knock to the head, like a traumatic brain injury, and that we have an injury to that, to a specific side of the ear. From my learning and from the classes I've taken, we're not, we're not um, healing that injured side. The amazing part of the brain is what we're doing f through vestibular rehab and therapy is that we're taking that brain and saying, hey, I know it seems different. I know you're getting different information from one ear versus the other. But by repeated vestibular, vestibular therapy, the brain now says, oh, okay, I know that's okay. Even though it's different, it's our new normal, I can do this. And yeah, it actually, figured it out. yeah, it figures it out. It, in my favorite word, neuroplasticity, it learns how to adapt to its environment and to adapt to this new, this new injury. And so a person can go from a significant imbalance to the brain adapts and says, hey, I got this. But it yep. takes repetition. It takes... Um, 
unfortunately with vestibular rehab, especially after traumatic brain injury, post-concussion, a lot of people have extreme vertigo and a lot of dizziness with head movement. The exercises provoke in a, in a well-established way, those feelings. So we, so if we're getting dizzy, turning our head back and forth, we work in those um, movements to help train the brain that it's okay. Yeah. So it may not be the most fun therapy, but after a while, the brain says, recalibrates and says, all right, we're back. Yep. And, we're back uh, and the other big one I saw all the time, which I want to talk about briefly is BPPV. So benign proxismal um, positional vertigo. With that, it's actually not an injury as it is something gets dislodged in the inner ear. And yep. I want to bring it up because I've seen a lot of people with it who spent years having extreme vertigo every time they moved their head and never found the right person. Yeah. Um, and it's treatable in one to three sessions yeah, like that. So I It's like the magic pill for these people. They'll come in. We just do specific maneuvers of their head to put back that um, displaced otoconia or crystals in our head and they walk out without a cane that they used to have to walk with for two years so yep. i always want people to know that there there's different injuries that require different therapy but if you're having vertigo when you're lying down or looking up in the shower or turning in bed and it and it's transient it lasts for up to 60 seconds it stops when you're moving talk to a professional because it could be something yep. that doesn't require significant therapy yeah. they, they also call that top shelf nystagmus so if you look up and you all of a sudden start getting dizzy it's mm -hmm. typically from yep. that yeah and that's that is an easy one and, and you know we don't see a massive amount of adults but almost it's, it's kind of wild because almost every time someone comes in that's an adult that has dizziness i mean like 80 percent of the time yeah. it's it's bpbv yeah. and it's super easy to figure yeah. out and you do a couple of you, you do a couple maneuvers and all of a sudden, they're just like, yeah, I'm back to normal. And you're the best friend for life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So. <laughs> like, you're going to hate this maneuver while we do it. Yep, exactly. And they do. And then after it, they're like, wow, I feel yeah. way better. And quickly, even BPPV can be benign. So sometimes yeah. we, I have a friend who's close to my age, around 30, and he, he gets it randomly. Never had a hit to the head or anything like that. So yeah. it, it doesn't have to be from a traumatic brain injury or concussion or anything like that. So. It's a bring one, a good one to bring up with a vestibular system. Yeah. But anything like inflammation to the inner ear, um, drugs can induce it, um, can change kind of like the how the inner ear is working, and then you can get episodes of vertigo. So yeah. sometimes it takes um, like a medical doctor to tease those things out, but vestibular um, rehab can help a lot with taking those changes and readapting that environment so that you're able to get back to walking. Yeah. A medical doctor is not going to re train you to go up the stairs without feeling like you're going to trip over yourself yeah and um medicines can help decrease that but if we want to get back to life we got to get therapy to help us with our movement same thing For with sure. kids we have to continue to activate this system um so that the brain learns more and more and more and it feeds into those higher level centers yep and, and um, most of the time with kids it's it's not typically peripheral issues unless mm -hmm. they had an injury usually it's central based issues and but the, the the nice thing is that the rehab is can look very similar um, depending on what the underlying cause yep. is. But a lot of times that, you know, a peripheral issue to take care of that, you retrain the central or the, the cerebellar aspect of that, and now their brain recalibrates it. And if they have a central issue, because a lot of people will go to their ENT or and they'll do all these different maneuvers, they'll put a VNG on, and they'll, you know, test everything like, oh, no, everything looks good, mm -hmm. but it's not a peripheral issue. It's yep. a central issue. And unless someone assesses that central issue and rehabs that, then they still just don't feel good. Absolutely. So. And, w and we're not talking about central issues that are from, like, an active stroke or a tumor or things like that that can right. cause vertigo and dizziness. It's more so in children who all that's been cleared. We know it's just a developmental delay. Yeah. Um, we haven't got the feedback into that system or we're delayed in the systems that feed into it. So it's also, if you're having consistent, crazy dizziness and vertigo, just get it checked out first. I want to rule that out. Rule yeah. that out first. But there is a lot of kids that we see, like you said, that's central because the brain, which is considered the central part of the um, vestibular system, isn't getting the right feedback. It's not developing as, yeah. as we would love it to. So. Yep, exactly. If your kid's struggling with developmental issues, if you're if you're having issues with vestibular issues with dizziness or disorientation, there is a solution. Like the vestibular system is so adaptable. It's, you know, that neuroplastic change can happen so quickly with the right environment, with the right stimulation. And making sure that 
you know, you are doing rehab for, it makes a world of difference. And what, like, even if it's just a kid that has reading issues, a lot of times the eyes, um, they're so dependent upon our vestibular system for normal function. And if our vestibular system's off, our eyes can't develop. They can't track appropriately. We get skipping, we get jumping. So even if your kid's having challenges with reading, making sure that their vestibular system is not a, a big piece of that is also extremely important. And you may have some more words of wisdom on that one. Yeah, and I was also going to say vestibular therapy is really well established now um, in adults. Yeah. But I think it's not as well established or not as looked at when a child comes into to their doctor and says X, Y, Z. That's yeah. you, vestibular therapy is, or vestibular impairments aren't usually the first one they hit and they're not sent to somewhere that's like, hey, you probably need vestibular therapy. So I think a place like this allows us to grab them earlier kids brains at these young ages are so neuroplastic they can change so quickly compared mm -hmm. to adults so the faster we can get them and to help them with that developmental sequence the better for sure 100 percent um so if you guys need anything you need help with anything let us know have any questions comments you know hit us up we're always always here to help um, if you want us to talk about any topics in relation to the vestibular system also let us know that with a comment and we can do some follow-ups to this so uh, thank you. Thanks for your time, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Have an awesome day, everyone. Peace. It is fun. <laughs> it's just kind of like chat. Did you see the one?